the judges create a huge speculative exercise to show how this would have been possible. I think it's very important when looking at this to notice the slide in the use of possibility between those two positions. The 1624 document is talking about a legal test. If you can prove that these relevant facts happened, that people were discussing, conspiring, whatever it was, then they're guilty. Whether or not they could actually have carried out what they were conspiring to do it doesn't form part of the test. At least that's the way it's set out in, in this document. But in the 1626 document, they're looking at something different. What they're trying to do is assess the factual background. And the use of possibility in assessing that seems to me to be something quite different. Um, what they're doing there is they're trying to ask themselves, what is the plausibility of these facts coming into existence at, at, at all? In other words, in order to try and prove whether or not the facts happened at all, you have to ask yourself, was it possible for this plot to have taken place? And if we look at those facts, it seems overwhelmingly clear that the English and the Japanese were vastly outnumbered, vastly outgunned, they had no means of support, and the Dutch had proximate and overwhelming um, support in the area. That seems to me to render the idea of the plot as set out staggeringly implausible. You can stop there, or you can say, um, what are the alternatives? Are there any alternatives to that? Um, the obvious answer, it seems, is that the Dutch panicked. Um, that the Dutch panicked, there wasn't any, any, any plot, um, they were aware of, local, aware of local tensions, they were threatened, and they misunderstood the vast imbalances of forces. And that's a usual scenario, that happens a, a lot of the time. Under pressure, people tend not to make rational assessments. If I, if I were to stand up in court and deal with this from the point, point of view of the English, what I would say is, People don't act irrationally. People don't act in ways that are contrary to their interests. It's simply inconceivable that people would commit themselves to an attack on a castle which could gain them no advantage at all, when they would have no way of uh, removing any of their possessions or stolen goods from that castle, when they'd have no real way of holding that castle, when they'd be unlikely to be supported in their attack on that castle by anyone else. It just seems I would suggest to be wholly implausible for anyone to act in that, in, in, in that fashion. You have to look at what the motivation would be. And in this case, there doesn't seem to be any reasonable mot mot motivation, or at least not one that's identified in the depositions.